So let's wrap it up now by bringing in migraine and seeing how this trigeminally mediated disorder is tightly connected to nocturnal parafunction. You know, dentistry is a relationship with a trigeminal nerve is a daily event. Our goal is to not let the trigeminal sensory nucleus know what we're doing out here. If you want to do a root canal, you don't want the trigeminal sensory nucleus to have any idea of what you're doing. So we block all trigeminal sensations back to the sensory nucleus because we don't want the patient to have a reflexive re um, activity to what we're trying to do. So we block no seoception. We are the noxious input to the sensory nucleus on a daily basis because we know if we do a root canal today and another one tomorrow and another one the next day without anesthesia, by the time we try to get to that tooth, this patient's been centrally sensitized and you can't touch them because everything hurts even before you, you tr start. You touched your finger on that tooth, it's going to hurt them. So we can't allow any noxious bombardment of the sensory nucleus, so we are constantly blocking all sensation. So let's look at the, the pathophysiology of migraine. Let's review some of these structures. Here's this trigeminal nerve, first, second, third division. This is the sphenopalatine ganglia. It's the second largest neural center in the head next to the brain. It includes sensory, motor, and autonomic components. There's sympathetic nervous input and parasympathetic nervous input, and it sits right on the tract of the second division and goes right into the sensory nucleus. Right now, the hypothesis of migraine is that it involves dysfunction of brain stem pathways that normally modulate sensory input. Now, modulate means to adjust or adapt to a certain proportion. The trigeminal sensory nucleus is being bombarded with information constantly. It has to make a decision as to what to pay attention to, what's the most important. And that's what modulation is all about. It's adjusting or adapting to certain proportions. So if something is really hurting, it will pay attention to that more. If it's just this background noise, it'll almost not look at it all. Like taco chips on the roof of your mouth when you're chewing food is ignored. It's not important. It modulates that for you. So an easy way to, to term this is migraine involves abnormal sensory modulation. Input comes in from the third, second, third division through the sphenopalatine ganglia. And the, and the trigeminal sensory nucleus abnormally modulates, meaning it's assigning more value to input that doesn't have value. And then it makes an improper response decision to that input. And that improper decision is to elicit a secretion of neuropeptides through the first division that will bathe the meningeal arteries and make them burn. They start to hurt they become inflamed. They call it a sterile inflammation. It's a self-induced inflammation in response to input that was not necessary to respond to. It was abnormal sensory modulation. Well, it's not limited to the first division. The third division trigeminal axons also secrete neuropeptide that will take normal sinuses and inflame and swell them up. So migraine will involve some of the stuffy, drippy sinuses, their face is pounding and their head is killing them. Sometimes there's more secretion of neuropeptide to the sinuses there than there are to the meningeal arteries. They call that sinus headache or recurring sinus infection. There's no sinus infection there, but it sure feels that way that way. Now there's also a pounding association uh, with migraine and now the thought is this. It used to think that these arteries themselves were throbbing. Now they're thinking that it's the normal fluctuation of the pressure of the sphenol of the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF. That that normal fluctuation of pressure of the cerebral spinal fluid is being perceived by these hypersensitive axons as throbbing. The patient perceives every beat of their heart, their head is pounding. Well, they perceive it as pounding because of the hypersensitivity of these trigeminal axons now. 
So if the goal then is how might this is to understand how this trigeminal sensory nucleus becomes sensitized to begin with to be to make such weird decisions in its modulation. Well, the goal in migraine prevention is to eliminate or minimize the no seoception to the trigeminal sensory nucleus. What things come in here that irritate this to make it respond? And in medicine, the first thing they say is, look, you got to find out what your triggers are. What is it in your diet that modifies your parasympathetic sympathetic tone that goes to the sphenopalatine ganglion that bombards this trigeminal nucleus, sensory nucleus, and it's being misinterpreted? or improve your lifestyle, change your sleep patterns, don't be so stressed out. Well, the, well, the, that's real difficult for the patient to accept this and to, and to do it. So they usually turn to some sort of medication that modifies their neurotransmitters. In dentistry, we see input to the second and third division all the time. But to a physician, all they're thinking is here. Can you imagine now not anesthetizing these sensory neurons and you would have a huge bombardment. You might you might get a centralization of the system where they become everything is painful, everything is perceived as negative. So how does parafunction influence this trigeminal sensory nucleus? Well normally the motor root is eliciting an opening and closing and opening and closing because there's a reflex of activity through the mesencephalic nucleus, but for some reason there's no inhibition there. It's the motor division is running out of control during certain sleep stages. It's sort of like in California, we say there's no governor on the engine. So at some point we start to get noxious input through the third division and second division that bombards the sensory nucleus. So could the nociception of parafunction, teeth being compacted, joints being strained, muscles burning up, and bone being crushed, could those things be bombardments of nociception to the trigeminal sensory nucleus so that later on during the day it perceives normal input improperly, it doesn't modulate right, and it makes improper reflexive decisions? The reason why this isn't being well appreciated because it all happens under the cover of darkness. No one ever sees it happens. A neurologist looks at someone's teeth and if they see wear facets, they don't know what they're looking at. They go, oh yeah, I guess you grind your teeth. Big deal. Because their world is through the first division of the trigeminal. They have nothing to do with these final other two divisions. As a matter of fact, when I met Dr. Blumenfeld, I'm talking all about the third division. He goes, Jim, 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 Jim. We're neurologists. We've ignored the third division. That's you guys. Well, now it's now known that most migraines start or, are, or patients are awakened by migraine in the early morning. It's all part of their sleep pattern. So in the first test, the uh, clinical exam or clinical trial we've done with an enhanced deprogrammer, we took 20 chronic migraine patients in a row and they took their headache impact test and that's a, a chart that they fill out that describes the quality of their life and how it's being impacted by their migraine. And 20 patients in a row at a tertiary migraine clinic, by definition, these are all miserable human, human beings, they rated their life as having being severely impacted by disabling pain. Well, nine months of using, well, actually, the effect happens within a few weeks, but following nine months of continuous use of this enhanced deprogrammer, over half of the patients had significant improvement in their lives. Here's each of those individual 20 people. Six of them really didn't have much change at all in the headaches they had upon waking. Perhaps their nocturnal parafunction can be now ruled out. That's what I provide for these neurologists. I will rule out the most common causes or perpetuations of their nociceptive input. Six of them. Far more than half of them, 12 of them, it, it, it changes their morning headache presentation entirely such that they can now manage their life throughout the day. 